Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us again. So shall we pray together before we get started? Let me pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, when we were in darkness, without knowing any hope in our life, you came to us to save us and you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to wash away all of our sins. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you. And we want to please you as much as possible in our life. And Lord, when Jesus comes again, you will take us to heaven and there we will spend eternity with you. So thank you so much for this blessing. And Lord, we are here to listen to your word again. Help us to grow more in our Christian life and strengthen us and empower us so that we can go out and share this good news with others. We pray that many more souls will be saved through our ministry in coming days. So from the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, let us turn to um, Numbers chapter 14, verses 22 to 24. Numbers chapter 14, verses 22 to 24. Let's read it together. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times have and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring him to the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. The Bible is full of the promises of God. And um, so the Old Testament can be said uh, it is uh, Old Covenant or Old Promise. So Old Testament is the promise that God would send the Messiah, the Savior, to die for sinners, to cleanse our sins. That was the promise before Jesus came. That is the Old Testament. And what is the New Testament? Whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now we have Jesus Christ and whoever believes that Jesus finished everything on the cross and He you know, cleansed our sins eternally so that you know, our past, present, future sins are all forgiven by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the promise that there's a promise that um, you know, we'll be joining God in heaven and we'll spend eternity with Him because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That is the New Testament, new promise actually. So what is the Bible? Bible is the collection of God's promises. And here we just uh, read um, this scripture here. You know that after spending um, some time in the wilderness uh, after the Exodus, the children of Israel sent out 12 spies and 10 of them were saying that the land, you know, the people there are very strong and we cannot take it because uh, they are too strong compared to us. And what does God say in verse 22? Because of these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. Only Joshua and Caleb entered the land of Canaan and they saw this land flowing with milk and honey, right? So what's the difference between all these people, uh, the others? There were 
600,000 adults and um, this Joshua and Caleb, those who were above 20 years of age, they couldn't enter the land of Canaan except Joshua and Caleb. So what's the difference? The people, the children of Israel disobeyed God and they didn't trust God and they didn't really believe the promise God gave them. You will take the land. The land is yours. I will take you to the land of Canaan. That was the promise of God again and again and again. Those who do not trust the promise of God, they cannot see the promises fulfilled, right? But verse 24, But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring him to the land where he went and his descendant shall inherit it. His descendant will inherit the land. 45 years later, you know, Caleb, he came to Joshua and this is what he said. Jo uh, Joshua chapter 14, Joshua chapter 14, verse 12, Joshua chapter 14, verse 12. Let's read it together. Now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. God promised that my descendant would take this land. So... Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. It was after 45 years, you know. So they spent almost 40 years in the wilderness. And then uh, Joshua took the children of Israel to the land of Canaan. They uh, conquered uh, Jericho and Ai, some cities. And then Caleb, now he, he saw the uh, opportunity to, to ask for the land God promised. Right, verse fourteen. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, Caleb, the son of Jephneh, the Canaanite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Caleb took Hebron, and uh, his descendant owned it. So, what is the secret of Caleb? And then, what are we supposed to do with the promises of God? That's what we will. See today. I told you that the Bible is the, you know, is full of the promises of God. We see the promise of God everywhere. Actually, if you really want to see the promise of God is fulfilled in your life, there are three things you have to remember. First, you know, as you see many promises in the Bible, you read the Bible and you remember the promise. You remember. Okay, that's what Caleb did. You see. Verse 12, Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. I remember the promise of God. You know, He promised this land for me and my descendant. I remember. So first, remember the promises and uh, keep that, keep the promise in your mind, in your heart, so that you don't forget about it. That's the first thing you need to do with the promise of God. Remember. And secondly, you need the endurance and patience to see the promise of God is fulfilled in your life. Caleb waited 45 years actually. He remembered the promise but uh, the, the circumstance was not okay because they were in the wilderness and then the God wanted them to wander in the wilderness for years. So at the time he couldn't do anything but he remembered and then he was very patient. And then he was waiting, waiting until the uh, opportune time, right? So wait until God sees the best timing, okay? And thirdly, as Caleb did, he was not just sitting around. He remembered the promise. He was waiting. And then at the right timing, he said, Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. I will go and take it. Okay, I will go and take it. So go and take it. March on 
in your Christian life to, to see, you know, to receive what God promised to you. So these three things. First, remember. Second, wait. Be patient. And third, take it. Okay, these three things are needed for you to receive God's promise fulfilled in your life. So one by one, uh, we'll see in detail. First, remember the promises of God. Okay. You know, when we read the Bible, we see the promise of God again and again. And then whenever you see the promise of God, you remember, you keep that in your heart. Let's turn to Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Titus. Of course, among all the promises of God, this is the most important promise, right? Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Titus is after 2 Timothy. Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Let's read it together. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. What is our hope as Christians? This hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Do you know why we are always happy, you know, as born-again Christians? And we are not discouraged and then... Because we have this uh, hope and promise of eternal life. No matter what happens in your life, your destiny, your destination is fixed already. It is eternal kingdom of God, the heaven. Right? Heavenly kingdom where there's no tear, no death, no work, no sickness, no darkness. That is the perfect place. As I read the Bible, I find this uh, really encouraging, you know. What is the heaven? Heaven is the place where all of your wishes are fulfilled, you know. We all want to live eternally. That's what happens in heaven, you know. You never die in heaven, right? And then you don't want to get sick because you, when you're sick, you suffer. No suffering, no sickness. What about death, you know. Sometimes... Your loved one, they die and then you are separated. I mean, if they are born again, you have a hope to see them in heaven again. But still, in this world, you know, we'll be separated for a while. But, you know, if you believe that, if you trust God, and if you remember the promise of God, then we know that in heaven there's no death and no work also. You don't want to work, right? On Monday morning, when you get up, you, 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 you really feel uh, tired on Mondays, right? You don't have to work. No darkness. It's all light because God is light. Anyway, remember, heaven is the place where all your wishes and your whatever you want will be there, right? That is the eternal hope. No, hope of eternal life, which God promised before time began. Let's remember God's promise. John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Gospel of John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Let's read it together. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry, because you know, Jesus already he has prepared the mansions in heaven and he's waiting for us. Who is Jesus? The Son of God. And he called us his friends, right? And he is the one who loved us so much. He loves us so much. He gave his only he gave his life to forgive our sins and to be with us eternally. And this is the promise, right? And even after salvation, there are promises in the Bible that God will never and never ever leave us as orphans. We have a Father in heaven. Don't worry. Okay? And then He will give us the Holy Spirit so that Holy Spirit will guide us in our Christian life. 
and he promised that he will be with us all the time. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. That, that is really encouraging. I think uh, you remember the scripture, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Lo, I am with you always, where you go and what you do. He will be there. I still remember when I was in India alone without my family in the beginning of my uh, ministry there. Uh, first one and a half years I was alone without family because of the visa problem and then I felt lonely sometimes and I felt um, I missed you know family and uh, home country. But one day I saw the moon, full moon. And I realized that the moon looked exactly the same as the moon I used to see in Korea. And then I remembered, wow, the moon is the same in India and Korea. Oh, so is God. You know, so is God. God is the same God. And I was so encouraged. I was so encouraged by just looking at the moon, full moon that day, because uh, it, re it reminded me that, you know, God is with me always. And in our Christian life, sometimes we fail and we make mistakes. But at the time, you know, you have to remember the promise of God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Let's read it together. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes, He has begun good work in us and He will complete it, not you nor me. Do you remember Peter? He denied Jesus three times and even later he made some mistake in Galatians. He was eating with the Gentiles but when the Jewish people came that anyway the Apostle Paul called him a hypocrite, you know. You play the hypocrisy because uh, you know, we are under the gospel. Then the there's no barrier between Jews and Gentiles, but he was, uh, uh, he pretended he didn't have, uh, he didn't meet these Gentiles when the Jews came. Anyway, you see that uh, Peter was making mistake again and again, but still God used him and he died a glorious death by dying on the cross upside down because he said, I cannot die like my Lord Jesus put me upside down and then he finished his life, his race successfully when you are down and when you are, are failing again and again remember we have to be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ this is the promise of God actually he will do much more what we asked him Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 let me read Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us Isn't it wonderful and amazing that God would do above all things we ask or think You know in our church we are doing what we never imagined we would do going to the all nations in the world preaching the gospel and there are so many churches even in Africa where you know so many pastors are working together with us to preach the gospel and in the Philippines and in many countries and uh, when I was uh, when I was saved in 1989 and uh, we, we never thought that we would preach the gospel the whole world Amazing, because God gave this promise, right? God would do above all things we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Let's remember His promise. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God, then everything else will be added unto you. Do you remember the promise? Remember it, because... God says, you mind God's business, then I will take care of your business. 
right? Seek first the kingdom of God. Join the fellowship. No matter what schedule you have, you just postpone it and then, you know, put God's work the top priority. Then everything will be will go well. I remember the promise and I believe it because, you know, my God is Almighty God, right? He, he created the whole universe with His Word, except us, right? So anyway, if you really believe and trust God, trust His promises too. Let's turn to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Verse 25, Acts chapter 27, uh, verses 22 to 25, verses 22 to 25. Let's read it together. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the sheep. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God, whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who, said, who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, man, for I believe God, that it will be just as it was told me. I like this one. For I believe God, that it will be just as it was told me. I trust His promise. But what was the situation? Verse 20. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days. Well, it was so dark. Without sun, without stars. Because of the cloud, I guess. And no sm small tempest beat on us. All hope that we would be saved was finally given up. No hope. And that's when Apostle Paul said, For I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. So you know what? We Christians are the one who trust God's promise more than the circumstance, what's going on around us. There's no sun, no stars, no light, many days, and then there's a storm, and the ship could be wrecked anytime, and all would die anytime. But Apostle Paul said, Don't worry, my God sent an angel and told me that, you know, all the people in the ship will be saved, and I trust my God. Read the Bible, find the promises of God, and believe that because God promised that Jesus would come again. When He comes again, our body will be transformed into the glorious body, and He will reward us according to what we have done in this world. You know, you might be uh, prospering in this world, earning a lot of money, and then, you know, achieved a lot in your life, but if you have not done anything for God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, everything will be burned and then you have nothing. But those who sacrifice themselves and they worked hard for God, they'll be rewarded. And one more thing, God will you know, avenge us. So those who wronged us, they will be uh, punished. That's why, you know, suppose somebody Somebody cheat, cheated on you and then they uh, treated you uh, very badly. Don't try to uh, avenge yourself. Okay? It is God's job. God will judge them. God will punish them at the end. If you do not trust God, you think that, you know, if you do not, if you don't do anything, for the person who, who wronged you that uh, you know you sometimes you cannot sleep and then you, you say that oh nobody understands my situation nobody knows what's going on and I, I should take some action don't do that if you really trust God's promises you know that at the final judgment everything will reveal okay in this world the evil people they look like they enjoy this life and then they are prospering, but don't worry. This life is short. Anyhow, the first thing you have to remember about um, the promises of God is read it and remember it. 
Okay. And secondly, if you really trust God and believe what God promised to you, then wait. It takes time. It takes time. Okay. God has His own timing. And we, we think that, oh, God should take action as much as possible, as soon as possible. But it's your, your thinking. God has His own plan, His own timing. Because so many Christians do not understand this fact, they fail. Okay? One Christian was praying to God, God, you are Almighty God, so for you, one million dollar is just like one dollar, right, God? God says, yes. So Lord, just give me one dollar, please. I need one dollar, hoping that he would receive one million dollar. And God said, okay, I will give you one dollar, but just wait one day. Later he realized that, oh, for God, one day is like a thousand years, thousand years is like one day. What God said was, wait one thousand years. You know, we should be patient. We should endure to receive God's promises. Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Let's read it together. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You have need of endurance. Look at Joseph. After he had a dream from God, the vision that he will be uh, like a uh, be promoted actually you know his father and mother and all of his uh, brothers will bow down before him because the sun moon and stars bowed down before his star but when did it happen you know he was sold as a slave and then he spent 13 years suffering there as a slave and as a prisoner and in God's best timing Okay. He became the prime minister of Egypt at the age of 30. I was thinking about that. Uh, you know, how could uh, God put him in at that high position of governing the whole Egypt? The second uh, most powerful person in Egypt. He lived in Canaan. And then he, 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 he was young. Egypt is, uh, was an emperor empire at the time, the, one of the strongest and most powerful country in the world. And how could Joseph, who was living in the, uh, this Canaan, he could become the prime minister of Egypt. And God, you know, God did wonderful thing in his life, but he waited 13 years. What about the Moses? Moses had a heart to serve the Lord. That's why he left his position and he wanted to take care of his his people, the children of Israel. But after killing one Egyptian, he fled away and then he spent 40 years in the wilderness as a shepherd. 40 year training, 40 year suffering, actually 40 year he lost all the hope that he would work for God. And that's when God called him back. Hey Moses, it's your turn now. After 40 years. David, after getting anointed by God, what happened to him? More than 10 years he was on the run because his father-in-law, Saul, King Saul, tried to kill him again and again and again. For you have need of endurance. Be patient. Okay. James chapter 5. James, after Hebrew, there's a James. James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Let's read it together. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and later rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. You remember this was written almost, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago. And even the time, uh, James said, 
for the coming of the Lord is at hand, is near. Be patient. He's coming, surely. 100% sure. But you need to be patient. You know why Jesus is not coming so soon? Because there are so many unsafe people. I mean, for you and for me, we don't really care about the people uh, like, uh, you know, those who are in Africa or Latin America. You know, those people who live far, far away from us. We, we, we don't see them. We don't know who they are and we don't care for them. But God, for God, one soul is as precious as the whole world. And that's why he's, uh, he's, he'll be coming, but he's, uh, still he wants, to, uh, he wants uh, even a single soul to be saved. Okay? Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Until the coming of the Lord. Be patient. Why? Because God knows better than us. God is waiting for the perfect timing. Okay? Listen to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 13, uh, 30, 30, verse 18. Let's read it together. Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Just wait, be patient, and endure in your position. At due time, in due time, God will raise you up. And in due time, Jesus will come again for us. In Christian life, what is the most difficult thing? Waiting, be, being patient. Why? You have your own idea. You have your own prospect. You have your own plan. And you think you are better than God. And that's why you are wondering why God is, uh, doesn't keep His promise. Okay? And now you know the reason, because God knows better than you. And uh, our job is waiting for Him, waiting for Him, this waiting. But still having hope is the most difficult thing to do in Christian life. Many fail, like a king soul, he fail, right? Samuel was not coming, and then the, the Philistines were there. So he offered the sacrifice, which he was not supposed to do, right? And that was the reason why you know, God left King Saul and then he chose David. Be patient, like a Job. You know? Because Job, when you read the Job, we know the conclusion actually. God will restore Job's wealth and he will give another 10 children and then uh, it's a happy ending. So for us, because we know the uh, the end of the story, we might be wondering, ah, oh, if you know the end of the story, you might be, uh, you know, it's it's okay. You know, you just spend, you suffer for a short while, but if you know what will happen at the end, it's okay. But Job didn't know that. And actually, we know that when Jesus comes. There will be great victory for him. He will be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then we will also be glorified and we will be sitting next to God. That's our position, right? Be patient. In the church, sometimes maybe uh, you are not appointed as church officer. Some brothers and sisters are disappointed when the, they are not appointed as church officer. Or anyhow... Just wait, actually, you know. Is it, is it because uh, of the position you are working hard for God? No. It is because you love God and it is, you want to return the love of God in your life. That's why we are serving the Lord. We are working hard whether people recognize us or not. It's okay. You know? And just wait. Then God will raise you up and then God will uh, put you 
in more important position so they can work more and more for the Lord and even if it does not happen it's okay you know anyway be patient and uh, I heard this story right when one person drowned in a river in the night time actually what happened was uh, in the morning time people found that dead body and they found that he was so near to the river bank it was like a you know one or two meters but you know what in the dark night you you don't see that you know that's why you gave up you give up suppose that person who drowned and dead if he had known that he was just two meters away from the the bank the river bank that he could have swam there and then he could have survived right but he just gave up right there because it's so dark when i was young i was uh, i went to the sea i arrived in the sea late night and then the, wow that night i was so scared do you know that um it's very shallow on the shore actually like a 10 centimeters or 20 centimeters it's a it's very shallow but in the really dark night when you are uh, standing before the sea and you don't know how deep it is then you get scared actually but in the na daytime you know i realized that it's uh, so shallow no way to die there like a you know this deep how is no danger at all when you wait and when the day comes you'll see clearly what was going on and you'll see how wise God is and then how patient God is actually uh, he never gives up on you and then he's waiting and waiting until you know you are ready actually so if you believe the God's promises then be patient and don't think that you know God will take immediate action God knows better than that number three remember Caleb he remembered the promise of God that he his descendants would take the land secondly he was waiting 45 years and then thirdly he came to Joshua and said give me this land the mountain of which God spoke about uh, 45 years ago he took action he came and then he claimed for the land and that's what should happen in our life do you know that um, if you truly believe the promises of God you're not just idling you're not just sitting around you have to prepare yourself too okay suppose uh, you think that uh, oh I want to work as a missionary of course you have to wait because uh, in our church we are we are not acting alone we, we just wait for the church to to uh, appoint you as a missionary but still if you have that that uh, wish you no know, I want to preach the gospel in other countries then you have to study uh, the language first and then you have to study the Bible and then you have to uh, read yourself basically okay you have to take action so for Caleb he was not just uh, sitting back but he said I will go and take it according to God's promise because uh, it was right timing that's what happens okay let's turn to Joshua chapter 3 verse 13 Joshua chapter 3 verse 13 Joshua chapter 3 verse 13 Let's read it together. Joshua chapter 3 verse 13 And it shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. I just told you that if you trust God's promise, then you have to wait actually. But it doesn't mean that you, you don't do anything. You do nothing, just idling. You have to prepare, actually. You should do something. Let me tell you, uh, 
in the time of Exodus, the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. You remember? And then later, they crossed the, this river Jordan. So twice they crossed the river, but they are totally different. Why? Let me explain. The first time they crossed the Red Sea, there was, they didn't do anything. The children of Israel didn't do anything. The whole night, there was a strong wind. So God uh, divided the water and even God dried the land so that they can just go and cross the Red Sea. It's important. Because crossing Red Sea, it refers to our salvation. Regarding our salvation, there's nothing we can do. It's 100% God's work. We just take, take the gift. We just trust God. Okay? We don't do anything. We just believe what Jesus has done for us. So for Israelites, when they crossed the Red Sea, See, they just crossed it. They didn't do anything. Even though there was a uh, water, maybe it was uh, standing there, but they just trust God and they crossed the Red Sea because they believed God, right? So that is salvation. But here, what happened when they crossed the uh, Jordan River is that when, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord, the door uh, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. The, the priest had to put their feet in the water. Then, God said, then I will make the, war, uh, the water as a wall. I will heap it up. Okay? I will pile it up. I will stop it from the upstream. So what does that mean? This crossing the uh, river Jordan is our Christian life after salvation. So don't be confused. For our salvation, it's, uh, because it is 100% um, God's work, the children of Israel didn't do have to anything. Just cross it. No way. Of course, they needed uh, faith that the uh, water would not go uh, come back to them. right? So they just crossed the Red Sea. It is act of faith. But when they conquered the, re, uh, the land of Canaan, the first thing God said was, the priest should put their feet in the water so that the water will be stopped. What does that mean? It's an action. No. Our Christian life is an action, not just a word. Okay? So if you truly believe the promises of God, you take action. For example, you remember that uh, Peter walked on the water? Yes. How did it happen? Only Peter walked on the water. No other apostles walked on the water. Why? He said, Jesus, can I walk? Jesus said, come. That's what I'm saying. Don't just sit there, but just, you know, try it. Let's turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Let's read it together. So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Many brothers and sisters uh, uh, get comforted by this scripture because this is the promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What happened? And you will be saved, you and your household. Not only you, but your family members will be saved if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, this is the promise. Of course, when one family member gets saved, God will work through that Christian brother or sister so that the gospel will be preached in that family. And eventually, the household, your household will be saved. But that doesn't mean that it will happen just, just automatically by itself. You know, preach the word in season or out of season. There's a commandment, command from God. So even if there is a promise of God, like uh, the promise was given to Caleb, your descendants will take the land, 
Caleb came and said, give me this mountain so that we go and we take it. You have to take it. You have to put your feet in the river Jordan. Then you will see the water will be cut off and then the water will stand as a wall. You can walk on the water only when you put your feet on the water. Isn't it obvious, right? So if you want to really see the promises of God are happening in your life, take it. Act on it. Okay? Let's turn to Judges. Chapter 5, verse 16. Judges. Chapter 5, verse 16. Judges, chapter 5, verse 16. Let's read it together. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the pipings for the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. What happened? So they are, uh, they were, there was a fight against uh, Jabin, the king of Canaan. Uh, Chapter 4, verse 23, So on that day God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, in the presence of the children of Israel. The prophetess Deborah was leading the army, and Barak, the son of Abinoam, he fought also. So this is the, uh, chapter 5 is the uh, talking about uh, what happened during the war. And verse 16, Why did you, you mean sir, Rubenites, Rubenites, why did you sit among the ship falls? There's a fight going on. Why are you are just sitting there? And then there was a great searching of the heart. What does that mean? There was a hesitation among the Rubenites. Should I go? Should I not? No, we might die there. And then we might lose something. There was a great searching of heart. Which means that they didn't take action. Okay. On the contrary, there's one woman who was really blessed by God in this world. Verse 24. Most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Heber, Heber the Kenite. Blessed is she among women in tent. He, he means Shishera, the commander of uh, Canaan. He asked for water, she gave milk, she brought out cream in a lordly bowl. Why milk? Milk uh, makes people sleep, actually. It makes you sleepy. Right? Verse 26, she stretched her hand to the tent peg, her right hand to the workman's hammer. She pounded his hair, she pierced his head, she split and struck through his temple. At her feet, he sank, he fell, he lay still. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell dead. It's Jaya, the woman, the lady who killed Shisera, the commander of Canaan. This is what happened. Shisera came to her, uh, her, her tent because uh, uh, Shisera knew her husband and she gave him milk to make him um, asleep. And then she took the tent pack and hammer and then she drove it into the temple of Shisera and think about it do you think that the Jael hesitated? what would have happened if Shisera just opened his eye? what are they doing? she could have died actually think, think about it you know, she, 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 she took the uh, tent peg and hammer Rubenized they were thinking and thinking, should I go? If I don't go, what other tribes would think about us? What about this sheep? Who would take care of this sheep? But Jael was different. That, that woman was a blessed woman. She just took it, the pack and hammer, and killed it. She said, uh, the enemy. That's why he was uh, praised. He was praised by God. In Christian life, it's not just word, but we have to take action, actually. Matthew chapter 11, 
Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 let's read it together and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force this violence is not in negative sense actually violent means uh, active you know you should take action do you know why Jacob was blessed even though he was a cunning man he was smart but he was cunning he was a heel catcher even in the at the time of birth he 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 was uh, holding the heel of his brother because he wanted to come first for the birthright basically and he cheated on his brother and he deceived his father later then why God blessed that Jacob because he had a heart for God's blessing and the kingdom of God right the kingdom of God suffers violence who takes the uh, kingdom of God those who want it those who go for it those who uh, do their best to take the kingdom of God sometimes I hear one brother he got saved after listening to our Bible seminar hundred times some 30 times many many times because they wanted to be saved but you know somehow they couldn't believe it and they listened again and again and again and again and again why because they want to take it the kingdom of God and they are the one who takes the kingdom of God the violent take it by force which means that uh, those who want it you know, those who go for it so you 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 know that there's a promise that God will save your family members go for it but not just praying but you have to open your mouth and talk to them and then try your best and then God's promise will be fulfilled right that's how Caleb took the land let me go and take the land I know there's a giant out there but I, I trust God's promises let me go and take it and this is how we we have the promises of God fulfilled in our life Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50, 5 0, verse 5 to 7. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 5 to 7. Let's read it together. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5 to 7. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious nor did I turn away I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard I did not hide my face from shame and spitting for the Lord God will help me therefore I will not be disgraced there a plint and I know that I will not be ashamed I have God's promise you know, people might mock me and beat me and spit at me let them do whatever they want to do but I will never disobey God verse 5 the Lord God has opened my ears and I was not rebellious nor did I turn away I remember God's word I remember I keep it and I, I obey it and verse 6 I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard I did not hide my face from shame and spitting it's okay whatever happens to me I will just hold on to God's promise okay people might st st strike me you no know? people might spit at me people might speak evil of me and then I might be alone you know so isolated because they don't want to be with me it's okay verse 7 for the Lord will help me therefore I will not be disgraced yes God will reward me and glorify me sometime later therefore I have set my face like a flint like a diamond you know, with a firm you know decision I will 
I will just follow God. I will obey God. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. And I aimed. Rather, I will be glorified by God. I set my face like a flint. I will never and ever uh, disobey God. I will just follow my Lord Jesus until the end. No turning back. Okay? And that's how you know, uh, we will see in our life God's promise is fulfilled. There's a story of one um, African person who became the professor of Cambridge University. So let me just briefly tell you and then I will finish. Okay? His name is Lexon Kaira. Kaira. K-A-Y-I-R-A. Okay. When he was uh, 16 or 17 years old, he was not so sure because uh, he, he didn't know exactly when he was born. Okay? So he was living in Congo, Congo in Africa. And when some missionaries came to his town and then they were talking about like uh, the, the president of Washington, the first president of uh, Washington of America or Lincoln, those are uh, great people actually. So he, he said, I want to become like uh, those great people. And he decided, he made up his mind to study in a college. Actually, he didn't, he was not educated at all. And he was 16 or 17. And he didn't know how to study at all. But he wanted to go to America where, you know, the, the Washington and Lincoln were presidents. So basically, he walked up to uh, Cairo in Egypt, uh, 4,800 4, kilometers away. He walked there. It took him more than two years. What happened was, five days after he left his town, he, he walked 40 kilometers. He ran out of his food and then he got no money. He was sleeping on the street and then he was uh, just uh, taking fruit from the, the wild fruit. He had nothing, basically. Okay. And then he reached Uganda after 15 months. 15 months. Uh, he walked 1,600 kilometers by then. And then he, he was walking there six years uh, in the library and he saw one university, the picture of one uh, college in, in university. And he wrote a letter for admittance, actually. Of course, uh, he has no education, no background for the college education, but somehow the college accepted him. But he had no passport. He found no passport. He has no fare for the air flight, nothing basically. So what happened was uh, he got the passport with the help of the missionary in his hometown. I told you he, he didn't know he, when he was born. Actually. So making that kind of official document was not easy. And then he had no money to fly to America. What happened was the college which accepted him, the students heard about him, they collected money and bought he, him air ticket. So he studied there. I don't know whether he knew English or not, but he graduated there and then later he became the professor of Cambridge University uh, in the Department of Politics. So what does that mean? You know, he walked and walked more than two years, 4,800 kilometers. He was writing letter to the college for admission. And then he, got the, uh, he flew there with the help of the students and when he was trying his best, everyone was helping him. And it's true for Christians too, because God will help you. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. Remember the promises and be patient and take action. Go for it. And that's how you will see in your life, you receive God's promises in your life. Okay? And you will be surprised that God will keep His promises again and again and again in your life. And that's how we live a victorious Christian life.
because we know God never lies and he will he will help us to the end he will perfect it to the end and that is also God's promise let's pray together our Heavenly Father thank you for giving us the Bible which are full of the promises and then we know that you never lie and today we learned that Caleb took the land of Hebron by trusting you and your promises and Lord in our life help us to to hold on to your promises and be patient and you know go for it and take it violently like Jesus said so that we can see all your promises are happening in our life so Lord we trust what you said to us and we know that you will be with us all the time so Lord thank you so much for this time and always help us so that we can bear many fruits for you and we can achieve great things for you and we can glorify you and we can please you thank you so much for for this time together and in Jesus name I pray Amen.